Hi guys and welcome to this episode of the Comedy Defects Podcast. My name is Winter Fonander, I'm a comedian and this is my show. This is the 51st episode of this podcast, guys. So, welcome. Yes. This is with a great comedian. He's been going about 16 years. He's South African. He has been on Comedy Central in South Africa. He is the wonderful, very funny and incredibly nice guy, Mark Palmer. I talk about all I have, how I met Mark and, and the journeys that we've shared together, but we'll talk about it later on. But what's been going on with me? Well, I have been getting already for the fringe. I've got my show called A Side Effect. Not Tolerance Anymore. Changed it. Changed it. Had to be changed. It's called A Side Effect now, guys. And it's on from two to three in the Three Sisters, just off Cowgate, in the Marquee. Two to three, not the 7th or 14th of August, but I'm there from the 3rd to the 27th of August, guys. So come see my show. Look, you know, I keep asking you to donate, but you know what? If you don't donate, just just come see my show, guys. I, I put a lot of work into it, you know? That's it. That's all I ask you to do. Come support the show, because I have put a lot into this show. I'm really happy with it. Everyone says that about their shows, but I'm really, really am happy with it. It's a storytelling show with jokes. Uh, you can... Follow me on Twitter at Winterphonander, which is going to be live updates about the show on there, all fringe. It's going to be great. And you can, uh, you can follow me on Facebook. You can also join the at Guinness Jokes, where I will be stripping the jokes out of the Guinness Encyclopedia. I haven't been really slack with that recently, but I've been writing the show, guys. It's been, I've been busy, okay? I've been busy. Don't, don't be stressing me, okay? But you can also uh, follow this podcast as well, at The Comedy Defect. And if you want to donate, you can go to Patreon, type in The Comedy Defect Podcast, and you can donate as much as you want. You know, do a little as a pound, or as much as you feel this podcast is worth. And those of you that do donate, thanks. And those of you that don't, that's okay, guys. You know, just come to my show in Edinburgh. I'm there from the 3rd until the 27th, not the 7th and 14th, in the marquee at the Three Sisters, 2-3. to three. Come and see the show. That's all I'm going to say for this intro, guys, because I've been trying to get Mark Palmer on this podcast for a very long time, and I hope you enjoy it. This is the very funny, one of the nicest people I've met in comedy. It is the amazing, very talented Mr. Mark Palmer. Hey Mark, welcome to the Calm Defect. How are you doing, man? Winter, absolutely brilliant, man. Thank you for having me. Well, not having me here. Thank you for coming through to my house. To yeah, do this is <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's an absolute pleasure, man. It's a really lovely place. Uh, yeah, really enjoy. You got your little dogs there as well. Got my dogs and, uh, and the joys of being married to someone with a great job. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Well, a tough life, you yeah. know. As they say, what do you call a comedian without a wife or a girlfriend? Homeless. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a great little place. We've got our fish and we've got our paintings on the yeah. wall and. Nice kitchen, and this is where we this is that this is where we live. Really, awesome. very rarely in the in the living room watching TV. We yeah. just TV on the small screen. And uh-huh. Is it like is, is it is this like this is a London borough, isn't it? Really, um, is it? no, it's just outside. I mean, it's Walton on Thames, mm. Um mm-hmm. So we're sort of two stops away from Zone Six. So Surbiton okay. is Zone Six, and mm-hmm. uh, it's East Surbiton. So. I don't know why we're talking about transport. I don't know. Yeah, we're just like... Yeah. It's, 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 it's a London thing, isn't it? Comic, yeah. Every comic talks about transport. You know, what was that? It was the M4. Yeah. It was like, oh, totally. the M6. Oh, that's the, it. The M4. Oh, no, that was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That's, I think we all... You know, most people will talk about holidays and like, comics talk about travel. Yeah. We're trying to find a quicker route to get there, isn't it? On the street, man. The On the road, man. Get, yeah, On the road all the time. And then I think the moment <laughs> you see that diversion sign, oh, you just oh, you get that sinking feeling. Killer. And it's like, oh, jeez. And the worst is you're on a road and then you get diverted and you get on another road and then that road's closed mm-hmm. as well it's like the, the guys didn't communicate I met you about maybe four years ago was that right yeah I think I, I'm just trying to remember where it was it we, was I, I oh you, we did a road trip together that's we right. went down to some of Plymouth area uh, didn't we we did we went to do that Tom Gloves Tom gig Gloves, that's yeah, right that's it was right. a lovely gig it was, it was. There, but there, that, that tree that they warned you about don't go near because it was poisonous do you remember that there was uh, like inside a cafe type thing and then there was the there was outside was this tree it said like the leaves and all that are quite poisonous so don't let your kids play it's, uh, it's quite you know, yeah. I don't know how they go around the health and safety bit. Yeah. That, but yeah, well, I remember that. Yeah, we we drove up. You you came through. I was living in Woking in Berkshire. Yeah, that's right. And you yeah. came through, and then we drove through together and had a bite to eat at the pub, I think, and then came back. And then that's we met up at another gig that got cancelled. 
was down near oh, towards Brighton yes. side, I think. We That's were right. Along that that side. was it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that was it. We just had a, had a chat and then we yeah. left and we got paid. It was good. Good yeah, gig. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great gig. We were all killed. We good memories. It. Yeah, we smashed that gig. Good memories. Yeah. It's been a while, man. So, so what have you been up to, man? What have what you been chipping away, doing stuff? What, what, what's been happening? <sighs> doing what we do. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, I think the last time when, you know, when we travelled down to that gig, you were still working, I think, in the TV industry. I was, yeah, yeah. Back in TV. You were like, you're about to take the next step and... I mean, I've been doing the, the comedy thing for a while, obviously um, not originally from England, um, yeah. from South Africa yeah. originally, and um, moved across here in 2012 with the missus, yeah. and basically to pursue a career as an international comic. You know, I thought mm. to myself, you know, well, I'm doing okay in South Africa, I'm not Trevor Noah, but um, I'm doing, I'm, I've got a decent life and I've, I've, I'm, I'm doing pretty okay. But I want to play on the big stages in the world, you know. And then you arrive, and then you do a gig in in um, in an older shot in a pub, <laughs> and you go, "Wow, this is the big stages, and this is great. I'm living the the international comedy dream." Yeah, so we moved across here in 2012. I'm not just another foreigner coming to try and take jobs. I promise you, I'm, I've got proper British ancestry. Basically, gave up a career, full-time professional career in South Africa to literally start at the bottom as an open micer again here in the yeah. UK. And it's now been just over five years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could say, I guess I'm making a living from it. Some months are better than other months mm-hmm. and as, mm-hmm. as this industry is. And, um, you know, you get in your car, you drive, you make people laugh and you meet some awesome people on the way. And that's what I've been doing. And yeah. I've been doing a bit of writing, um, working on a couple of projects with my wife. Um, she's in the food industry. Keeping busy, keeping busy, busy putting together a tour now for South Africa for the end of the year for October, November. I'm going back for four weeks to Johannesburg, Cape Town and Durban. Four weeks, I've got to basically filling my diary up for the four weeks, uh, sort of end of October, beginning of November, which should be quite cool. So, yeah. great. I'm hoping that all works out. I've got basically almost every date full. I think I've got a handful of dates left mm-hmm. that I can still fill in, but I'm um, just just trying to go just hustle man it's, this job yeah. is hustling you mm-hmm. know meet people beg for gigs and yeah. do gigs and yeah. I'm, I'm also very i'm very very lucky as well i've got an agent and you know he does a great job and just, you know he keeps me busy mm-hmm. but you know there's only so much an agent can do and yeah. you know you've got to keep your own thing going I've, I've started running a couple of gigs myself now just slowly getting it off the ground mm. got one tomorrow night here in Hersham, oh, yeah. just down the road. So I, I can literally walk to the gig. It takes me five minutes to Brilliant. walk to the gig. We did our first one last month. We had the incredible um, Saul Bernstein closing. Oh, yeah. oh man, that guy's Brilliant. just like a like a human wrecking ball of yeah. comedy. And Josh Pugh opened, so yeah. you know, he's just Brilliant. he's just a quality act. Um, yeah. Then we had Rob Thomas and Ian McDonald doing mm. in the middle. They were absolutely brilliant as well. And then tomorrow night we've got um, Nick Dixon. He's, yeah. he's he, I think. Um, according to me, smashes everything in the world. <laughs> he does. I mean, I've never, I've, never, I've never seen him have a bad gig. So yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah. Yeah, Nick's, uh, Nick's funny. I like yeah. I like Nick. Um, and then we got uh, Hugh Davies and Nick Ellery, yeah. um, who just recently won Old Comedian of the Year. That's right. They're middling, and then um, just the, the brilliant Adam Bloom closing. Mm. So. And I, I am see it all, and just, right. yeah. So you just got to get a couple of stuff. I'm just actually get you to do the gigs. So uh, I'm just, I'm, I've got my hoping that if this one goes well, then there'll mm. be a third one. That's so it. the uh, baby steps. And I've got Scott Capura penciled in for the oh, third yeah. one. So and he's, uh, he's right. brilliant. As yeah. Well. So we'll see. We'll, We'll see what happens. We'll that's see what happens. That's great. It's yeah. such a gift to have a, gi- a gig just down the road, isn't it? It is, yeah. And then I've got another one in Staines, which is, which is another seven miles away, so it's Lovely. not too bad. I'm trying Lovely. to, yeah, you, you've got to try and keep it like You don't want to yeah. be traveling miles that's and it. miles of sound rigging equipment mm-hmm. and, and everything. And, you know, when I, putting on a gig, I think it's just, it's just, you know, every comic, you know, you've got so many gigs. Hey, I've got so many gigs this month. I'm going to make this mm. month. Okay, I can make my rent. Mm. But it's always nice just to have that, that little extra cash injection. And I always like to try and make sure that I pay my comics the, like a, a, a great fee mm. in cash on the night. Yeah. You know, I don't like to. Yeah. I'm going to pay you in a week, two weeks' time. And, and this and this. I'll pay them in cash on yeah. the night. And um, It gets embarrassing, doesn't it, really? Yeah. You're kind of like chasing people. Go, Look, I've worked for this morning already. Can I can I please have it? Or, yeah, you know, know, I've, I've got to put extra petrol in my car. Yeah. I've got to pay for food and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And, yeah, and, I mean, and, and still, after 16 years of doing it, I've been doing this for 16 years yeah. now, Stan, I've still, after 16 years of doing it, you still get the whole, um, you know, it, you'll, 
we would get great exposure for the gear. That's, that's the golden one. I love the E word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. A lot of comics will say a lot of curse words on stage, but mm. nobody ever talks about exposure. They don't even mention yeah. the E word. You know, mm-hmm. the, the E word. No, that's yeah. The e word. <laughs> you'll you'll still get that, but you know, it's until my bank accepts that as as payment yeah. for credit card debt or whatever, or car debt yeah. or whatever it is. You know, yeah, that's then, it. Then I'll start accepting it once yeah. I do. So it's, it's not uh, it's not it's not involved in the barter system yeah, that we, uh, exactly. we work I, on. To be honest, it'll cost me less just to stay at home than yeah. to get in my car and drive. For yeah. hopefully someone seeing me. Like, exactly. But you know, there's, there's certain gigs that you know you just you'll get on a train, you drive in your car, you'll just go and play because they're just lovely yeah. gigs. And I mean, mm. I, I don't know what some of your favourite um, comedy clubs are in, in London. I mean, mm. but for me to, to go there just to do the new material, it's yeah. top secret for me. It's yeah. just probably my favourite mm. favourite club in, in London. And then I, I love doing Comedy Box in Bristol. That's such a that's, a, that's an awesome gig as well. But you just play so many awesome venues. I mean, yeah. I think we played, we did an opening night at a, at a gig um, called The Laughing George in yeah. Stamper, wasn't it? Lovely. That was mm. such an awesome, lovely, such an awesome night. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, there was. It was a killer night yeah. of comedy. It was loads of fun. And you get to see some awesome places. Mm. That's the thing with this with this job is you just see places that people wouldn't normally see. I mean, yeah. a lot of people from the UK. It's like they, they've probably been to more places in in Spain and 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 Italy and France and than than they have in their own country. And yeah, yeah. We get to, we literally get to see the country. And where about seeing South Africa? You from Cape, Cape Town. Town. Cape, Cape Town. Town. Yeah, that's where I'm from. That's my hometown. Born in Cape Town, yeah. um, started stand up there in 2001. Before that, I was in the legal industry. I used right. to be a lawyer, oh, right, prosecutor, yeah. put people in jail for a living That's it. for a little while, and then I got involved in the, the legal finance world, which was what happened? soul destroying. Man, it's okay, just, yeah, it's just, <laughs> I, the, the legal side, yeah. the, the law is just. It was one of those things. I finished high school. I just, I, well, I don't know what, what I'm going to do. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I ended up getting a job in South Africa with the Department of Justice. And they ended up sort of giving me a bursary to a scholarship to basically study law through them. So Mm. for three years, I went up to the Justice Training College up in Pretoria, studied, got my degree through the University of South Africa, and then basically had to work back. So they pay for your studies, but Mm. you then work back and you owe them the time back. So I worked for them. And then from there, I basically just moved on to the financial side of it, um, where, you know, it was. It's kind of like you know. It's just. It's the next logical step. You're making a lot more money. You know, you're young. Yep. You make a bit more money. It's cool. But it was. It was in that time in sort of um, ninety nine two thousand that I started thinking. Well, during my during my years at um, at Justice Training College, I would mm-hmm. just I would put on like just Im- improv shows for for my my, my mm-hmm. mates at, at college yep. at university. And the, the classes we used to attend, I used to be a massive fan of Billy Connolly, just absolutely yeah. massive fan. And, and what I would do is I would just like impersonate him a lot yeah. of the times on, and just for my mates and, mm-hmm. and that, and then just try and, and, and then come up with my own stories and, and, and sort of deliver it how he would deliver mm-hmm. it. And then I'd have some of the, the lecturers that would listen in and, and they'd be like, oh, you think you've chosen the wrong career mm-hmm. type of thing. I'm like, yeah. But then again, it makes me think back to when I was in my final year of high school, sort of at our high school prom, as they call it, mm-hmm. in South Africa. We call it a matric dance. So your matric year is your final year of high school, and we had like a prom, and mm. they were handing out awards to students. And I got given a, a toilet roll for being a crap talker. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. you know, so I, I, I got given the toilet roll, and yeah. I think I think it sort of like planted a seed. But then growing up, <laughs> when I was studying for my final year exams, and and I would I would go after school. My parents used to have this like little takeaway restaurant. And I would go and, and, and after school, come there for a bit, work for a bit, and then go across the road to these mates of ours mm. that where I'd do my homework and finish my studies. And it was a Scottish couple, and mm. that's where I saw Billy Connolly for the first time. They actually had um, him on, on, on VHS yeah, yeah. tape. I mean, yeah. we know what VHS uh-huh. tape is, but there might yeah. be something. What is VHS <laughs> tape? Um, but yeah, we watched it on VHS tape, and I saw this thing like Billy and Albert, and I'm like, oh, wow, holy yeah. crap, this is amazing. This is yeah. what this guy doing, making all these people laugh. I said, this is what I want to do one day. I think yeah. that this is what I want to do. And the seed was planted, and then that was in 1992. Mm. And only nine years later, I ever got up onto a stage for the first time. Mm. And it was when I was recovering from back surgery that I was I was sort of laying in bed, and I just started writing these ideas and thoughts. And then I got hold of the local comedy club called Comedy Warehouse in Cape Town. I phoned them up, and I said, 
Listen, how do you guys, you know, book open mic spots? Because I've done a lot of research online. The internet had still come around, you know, just like the dial-up yeah, modems yeah. and, and yeah. that. And you, you're about to get the information and then your mum picks up the phone. It's like, ah, come on, why don't you pick up the phone for yeah. you? you? Cut the signal, and, yeah. you know. And um, I was like, okay, I've learned mic technique and I read all about it and, and the proper etiquette of, of doing open mics. And mm. and, and with that, before I even knew it, these guys had booked me for my first open mic night. Mm. Went through there. It was a it was a Tuesday night. It was on students' night, so it was like half price drinks for them, etc. But the place was packed. There's about three fifty, four hundred people oh. packed into this place. No, they, they would have the MC come over, and then yeah. they'd have the two open micers come up straight right. away. And then the guy went on before me, and it was like, whoa, okay, mm-hmm. this is quite raw. This is going to be rough, man. Because he like really struggled. And then I went oh. up there, and I just sort of just just do it, man. Just yeah. just go for it. I I did five minutes, and I just it was one of those ones I've never done it before in my life oh. in front of like with a microphone yeah. in hand. And I basically got a standing ovation oh, for my very first brilliant. time. And I was like, oh, man, this is the best rush on earth. Oh, crap, this is amazing. Second time, died on oh. my <laughs> backside, man. I died on my ass. It was just insane. Oh. And, I, and I look back and I keep saying to myself that if, if it had happened the other way around, mm-hmm. if I died the very mm-hmm. first time, I probably would never have gotten up mm-hmm. on stage again. Yeah. It's just something about it. But the fact that it, it, that it like worked, it's like, oh, mm-hmm. this is incredible. What yeah. the hell is this feeling? This yeah. is nothing like I've ever felt before and it just kept me going and kept me going and kept me going and 16 years later still doing it man that's yeah, it. it's crazy you're, you're working as a lawyer you decide to kind of like get out of that yeah so why did you decide to make the change what happened what, what was it what was the, the final nail in the coffin with Do you know what? i've had enough I, I think i think any any creative person any sort of artist whether you're a musician whether you're a comic whether you're an actor you just don't have that fulfillment when you're sitting behind a desk and you've got to wear a collar and tie and you're answerable to a boss. I just think that it, it stifles your creativity. It just, it's sort of like just, it holds you back, you know, when you've got these, this dream of wanting to do something. So I had this job, I had just started doing comedy. I was having an amazing time and it was just like everything was just working and it was like, just loving I'm loving doing this but it was very difficult to to make a career mm. out of comedy as a comedian in South Africa back in the day it was like there was a handful of comics back in the day in, in the country that, to be to be honest if there were you couldn't even say there were 30 professional comedians mm. in South Africa in the early 2000s it was one of those moments where after about I think it was about five six months I, I started getting my first couple of paid gigs mm. like spots I was like oh this is amazing this is I'm getting paid to do stand-up comedy. This is just absolutely awesome. Mm. What ended up happening was I decided to... I got an, ended up getting an acting agent, and I ended up landing a couple of TV commercial roles, like international TV commercials. And suddenly you're making these big chunks of change, and it's yeah. like, why must I sit behind a desk for five <laughs> days a week and I can do this once a month and mm. make the same money exactly. as I'm doing it? I just I, I quit my job. Mm-hmm. I um, I cashed in my pension. I bought myself a Ford Mustang, <laughs> <laughs> as you do when you're in your when you're in your early twenties. I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. I, that's what I did. You know, I just lived this this. I just just like being a rock and roll star. Totally. So that's, um, yeah, I, I, it's never. I don't think comedians. They say all oh, comedians want to be rock rock stars. No, I don't. I don't think so. Um, it's just. It's that feeling of just making people laugh. You know. Um, you did it in style, though, Mark. I like that. You got yeah. your Ford Mustang, and you're like, you know, you're, there we go. I'm traveling to gigs. Um, left hand drive car in a in a, in a right hand drive country. Great. It's massive. <laughs> Five point eight liter V eight Mustang <laughs> driving down the road, and I mean, to gigs. And guys, all right, guys, get in. We're all driving to the gig. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, that, that's the thing. Yeah, you didn't travel in, in South Africa. Oh, no. You don't get in a car yeah. and, and drive six so, hours to a gig. It's just yeah. unheard of. You know. It's the kind of thing where people would book me for a gig, and and in my contracts that I would have, I'd like draw up my own contracts. Obviously, having a legal background, I never mm-hmm. had a comedy agent. I managed myself, mm. and I had. But what what they did have in South Africa was different entertainment booking companies. So they would hire speakers and comedians, mm-hmm. and, and then I would I would have like deals with all these guys, and then they would come. Mark, you available for a corporate gig here? And corporate. So I was like yeah. getting like three, four, five corporates a month, and doing gigs and and doing a bit of acting so you know you're living this amazing lifestyle and um, it's just you, know, yeah. you just become stupid really. why it? not do it isn't it why is it? exactly yeah, exactly I mean, it's just if it's 
if you can have the opportunity to do it, and you know what, I'll never look back and go, I should have done it differently, because it's like, no ways, dude. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's one of those things. I would I would drive through to this student town called Stellenbosch, just yeah. outside of Cape Town, where I lived. And it's just like it's like a, it's just there's a university. It's just like a student town. It's like it's like being in Cambridge or Oxford. You know, there's just students and there's yeah. student bars and. And I was basically paid by one of the nightclubs to sort of MC, so I'd stand in the DJ oh, yeah, box yeah. and hand out alcohol and everything. My, my Mustang was parked outside the front of the nightclub, you know, mm-hmm. outside of the venue type yeah. of thing. And you just live his life. And I mean, and you get given free Red Bulls and free yeah. vodka, smell of you just a bucket of vodka and, and Red Bulls. And I'd drink that and I'd basically polish that off yeah. a couple of shots, climb in my Mustang and yeah. drive home. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hammered, hammered. Yeah. It's like in South Africa, drink driving is, it's illegal, but it's like, well, yeah. you know, it's the kind of thing where, you know, if I drive home really fast, I won't be yeah. on the road as long. Yeah, you know, that kind it. of attitude. Yeah. If I turn my lights off, nobody sees me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I remember driving home one night um, from a gig and I was just, oh man, I was just, I wasn't, I wasn't in a good space. Oh. And I was driving and then, behind me I was like Woo! the blue lights I'm like oh jeez well, um, this is it this is game over the guy I'm going to jail mm-hmm. because I'm I'm drunk Yeah. and the guy pulled me over I pulled over the guy walks up first of all he walks through the wrong window because he's yeah. like yeah. So I see <laughs> he walks on the other side yeah. and the guy was like listen this is uh, uh, sorry for pulling you over sir uh, it's been in South Africa it's like they all the traffic cops they, they all sound like like that Vickers guy from District 9 you know right, yeah. you know, you know, you know uh-huh, District uh-huh. 9 yeah. he comes to the window and he's like okay sir uh, right uh, sorry for stopping you but uh, this is a very cool car mm-hmm. would you mind if we take some photos of your car I was like, <laughs> I was like my friend yes so you want to sit in he came out. I opened, I opened the bonnet of the car, of the car. I let them rev it and take photos. I took. Oh, come on, you guys get there. And I took photos yeah. of them with the car. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Down in my car, they pulled off. I drove. I thought, what ah, just yeah. happened? Yeah. I could have. I should have gone to jail. I, told you. I just don't know. They just wanted photos of the wow, car. That's so, great. It's like, dude, that, that car is probably the best investment I've ever made Absolutely. in my life. I cashed in my pension, and um, people go, oh, well, you don't have a pension anymore. Mm-hmm. I said, yeah, but it probably would have cost me the same to pay for lawyers yeah, to get me course. out of jail Definitely. for drink driving. Yeah. And I think, yeah, that was that was a wake-up call. I never did that. I never did that again. Um, yeah. I ended up selling the Mustang oh, yeah, a couple of years later. So, actually, on my, on my tattoo on my arm, actually, you see the little Mustang oh, pony. The little memory. Oh, the that's, little that's, memory. So that's, that's fair. That's fair. I yeah. bet it was tears when you just sold out. You know, no, to be honest, I was just got to one of those stages where you just... Your, your whole attitude changes, you know, when you're in the entertainment industry and you're living the high lifestyle, and, um, you, you, you really do develop an attitude. Um, you think you're uh, invincible. I mean, that's why I was, why, why, why I was well, I'm drunk, you know, because I can do anything yeah. I wanted to, you know. You could do anything you wanted in the nightclubs because, you know, you were one of the main people in the club, in the venue. And all the bouncers had your back, so it doesn't matter if anyone wants to start. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm the guy. I'm the guy. Right? <laughs> when you start living this lifestyle, what ends up happening is, you know, Mark, can you come do this comedy gig? And I'll be like, uh, nah, I'm not, I'm not in the mood for that. You know, mm-hmm. so, how much is it? Nah, I'm not, I don't want to do that. One. So I don't need to do it. So it's, it pays too little money. I'm yeah. not in the mood. I want to go and party and drink. And, yeah, yeah. You know. It got to a stage where I would go out, party, drink, wake up at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I've missed two auditions in the morning in the oh, city. Yeah. And what ended up happening is the, the acting agent said, well, Mark, you've missed too many auditions, so mm-hmm. we're going to stop. Comedy gigs dried up, you end up getting yourself into massive debts and all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. So, and it's basically just a matter of then cleaning up your life, you mm-hmm. know, cleaning yeah. up your life. And um, this all sort of happened in about 2007, so six yeah. years of living this lifestyle. Yeah. I moved out of the city of Cape Town and I moved in with my, I went to go and live with my parents, had this like little small hole in this farm in the Northern yeah. Cape. Just like, it's just like sheep farming out there. There's nothing. It's just right. like arid land. It's just yeah. nothing out there. So I stayed there for a couple of months, about two, three months, cleaned up my act, stayed away from booze and mm. everything. And then went back to Cape Town. I moved in with a mate of mine, another mm. fellow comedian from South Africa. He's actually in LA now and uh, doing, doing pretty well for himself. Who's that? Uh, a guy called David Newton. Um, yeah, a good buddy of mine. I started living with him uh, as, as a flatmate. Basically, just decided, you know, I've, I've just got, I've got to change the way I'm living my yeah. life. So I started um, getting back into, you know, doing stand up and just I remember reinventing myself. And mm-hmm. what ended up happening is, I, I, it was my birthday in 2007. It's my birthday every year, but that, that <laughs> yeah. specific year in 2007, and um, had this big get together with my mates at this, this jazz club. Well, the stage, everyone was just liking jazz. Yeah. 
I don't, I, mm. I don't know if you're a jazz fan. Mm. I'm not a jazz. Mm. It's like the kind of thing. I don't think enough people go. I, I don't like jazz. It's almost like a pressure mm. that you have to mm. like jazz. It's yeah. like, no, I, I don't. I'm coming out. I'm saying it. Mm-mm. I've never once in yeah. my life ever thought to myself, you know, what, you know what I want? I want to listen to a 30 minute clarinet solo. Yeah, that's what I'm in the mood for. Mm. I want to listen to a 30 minute clarinet solo. And that's what happens in jazz. A doodle to is it like? Is it like a, they kind of you get to a certain age and everyone goes, "Well, you should be into jazz by now." Like classical music, you should be into classical music at this age. Sort of I thing. don't know. I, I think it's. I think it's. A, it's like a, a cool kid thing, you know, because oh, yeah. there's a couple of cool kids are liking jazz, and everyone will go to like jazz. And it's, it's normally like a group of mates. Go, oh, we're going to use that. Oh, yeah. And then there's always that one mate that goes, "Oh, listen, there's this really cool jazz club," and everyone's like, "What?" And, like, <laughs> and then they want to say no because and they, they end up all going, and then you're exactly. just sitting there. And then these guys, and they, and they, they do yeah. this thing. Like, there's no one dancing. There's no one. Mm-hmm. It's like people just standing around watching the guys, and they just like doing like this little weird head bob. And it's like, oh man, yeah. can you can you feel that? It's like four different guys playing four different songs at the same time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's like I don't know yeah. what. It, I, but they're everyone to themselves. I it's, guess. Like, it's like I mean, I love the Beastie Boys. I mean, yeah. it's snobs and everything, isn't it? It's like snobs with cars. It's like, you know, say if you have, like, the, all these people who drive Audis, yeah. right, or Audis over here, and they say, uh, you know, you drive an Audi, and, like, they're the most expensive thing that's going to break down and be really, really expensive when you're trying to fix it, whereas you can drive a Golf or a Ford, and it's just cheap and, and cheerful to fix. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's, that's the, the, all the snobs and everything, that's what it is. My car, my Mustang was a 1970 Mustang. I was mm. driving that up until 2006, so that mm. car was 30-odd years yeah. old. You know how you fix it? You open, you lift yeah. the bonnet up, you look, you just gave the engine a stare. So it's like, it's like a stare, you hit it with a yeah. hammer in a certain section, it. and it keeps going. And like, a 5.8 litre V8. Yeah. Oh, and it would, it would idle like this, or you go like this, like, litre, litre, oh. litre, litre, litre. That's it. <laughs> massive fuel tank. Oh, massive fuel tank. It would have till, but, um, till sound, yeah. sound effect on it. So then, yeah. and we were ended up going to the stupid jazz club, and oh, it was cool. All my mates came, and, and then this was one girl of mine, the friend of, the friend of mine, oh, they got cars, man. Oh. They got, like, Bentleys and Aston Martins, just, like, mega, mega rich people. She said, oh, I want to introduce you to this girl, and... So she, this girl comes along, and I meet her, and we end up chatting the whole night, and then we end up going on a couple of dates, etc., etc., etc. Basically just ended up marrying her. Ooh. So, yeah. Wow. So, like, nine years in August. Um, mm. So we ended up meeting each other and uh, that night, and we just, just kept it going. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah, and then getting back into the whole comedy thing, and then when I got married, obviously, I just... I, I, I basically reinvented myself in mm. the comic. I decided that... The person who I was is, is just not who I want to be anymore. Mm. This is it; just doesn't fit my lifestyle. It's I, I don't want to drink. I don't want to you know, get myself into an early grave. Mm. I don't like what I'm talking about on stage. It doesn't feel real to me. Yeah, mm. people are laughing at it, but yeah. it just doesn't feel real to me. It's not real life, you know. Just yeah. making up crap to talk about on stage, okay. and you know, and yeah, it might be funny, but it's just not real. It's just mm. I'm not being true to me. Okay, was it contrived the stuff you were writing? Was it like in, in what respect? I, to be honest with you, it was just it was nonsense. It mm. was just as a, as a comic, it would be like, oh, let me just write about a scenario, a mm. potential scenario. What if this and this happened? Okay. Yeah? It was a time when you would write. Oh, you were writing about you're young and you're, and you're partying in nightclubs. And you go, Meh. so this, hey, I hooked up with these like models mm. the other night, and mm-hmm. you know, it's like really, mm. you hooked up with the model? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, they were already drunk. <laughs> yeah. No, um, you just. I just. Didn't, I wasn't being true to me. I Got wasn't you. writing from my ex- right. experiences. I mean, I wrote about a couple of things from my experiences, but myself, I wasn't. I just felt I wasn't being true to me. Yeah. I, I said to myself, okay, you got, you got to do that. You got to, you got to change who you are. Mm. Let's 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 go back to let's go back to basics. And I started dating this girl. And um, what I did was I ended up going back into the finance world mm. to get a job because I was like I had intentions of proposing to this of girl, mm-hmm. and you know I wasn't making any money from from comedy mm. um, as such, and basically just had to go and get a job. So for two years I worked in it and then I started doing comedy again. Mm. I was writing. I decided to write from personal life, mm. uh, real life, real life experiences. So things that I had seen. I would, you know, I know people can say, oh, talking about airports in comedy is, is hacky. It's yeah, you know, it's old. It's, you know, nobody. Does. But if I have an experience and comedy is about, in, in my opinion, is about a story each comedian wants to tell. Mm. 
themselves. You know, it's my it's my experience. This is what happened to me. Let me tell it to you. If you're going to laugh, great. If you're not going to laugh, great. That's your it's your it's your choice. Mm. You know, I don't care. Other comedians can talk about whatever they want. I'll never judge a comic on what they want to talk about. Yeah. The fact, at the end of the day, our job is to make people laugh. Yeah. Our job is to make people laugh, mm-hmm. and by telling them the things that are in that go on in our head. So I will see things. I'll comment on it. I'll do this. I'll comment. Like I can't. I'm not a political comic. Mm-hmm. I can't. I can't do comedy about politics and Brexit and stuff. And the main thing that tells me that is my tweets never get retweeted. <laughs> so okay, if I can't do it in 140 characters, there's not a chance I'm going to do it on stage. So yeah. I, I stay away from that. But I, I'll talk about our life. You know, I mean, I'm married. I'm married yeah. for nine years. The comedy writes itself. It, yeah, yeah I was, it. it writes itself yeah. every day. Something happens. Mm. You know, we, we do something. Mm. Um, something goes on something goes down I've got dogs you know I mm. travel I travel all over the place and yeah. you know I can write about those experiences mm. and the fact remains is for me my opinion is that fact is funnier than fiction yeah because people can relate mm. and, and if you can find that common ground with people then yeah, yeah that's, exactly yeah. it's the most important thing it's like your first love is Billy Cundy right you know the, the Glaswegian accent as well is the, amazing for comedy yeah but it's he puts the 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 joke in your head and then he knows that you've got it before he's told the punchline yeah and then so it's so satisfying for the audience to go ah oh, we know but we're loving that you've said what we thought in our heads before you yeah, said it exactly and it's and it's one of those things, I mean, the same thing because that's my first love as well I first saw Billy Connolly's Best Of and I never laughed so hard and I then I started doing stand up a few years later as well but it was just like wow that's amazing you can do this and I was like that, that same sort of thing but that's what you're connecting with you're connecting with people on that on that just yeah, yeah. base human level um, and you're still coming up from your own perspective but people think it's hack but if you can't write something original about it that's your problem that's because yeah. you think it's hack but you um uh, but you have always worked clean, is that right? No, no. I mean, before before um, when I was living this fast paced lifestyle, I would just talk about anything and right. everything. I just, it, I decided it just it wasn't suiting who I am. Mm. Um, you know, am I a person that doesn't curse or every single? Are you mad? I mean, I'm a human. Mm-hmm. I'm a human. I mean, if I slam my finger in a car door, sometimes the ouch just doesn't cut it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day, do I like to swear? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it relieves frustration. Yeah. It, it does relieve a frustration when you're frustrated, you're angry, you're in the car, it's the fourth diversion on mm-hmm. your way home. You know, let yeah. the words fly. You're alone mm-hmm. in the car, let the words fly. But when, when, when you're walking around the street, you know, if I go sit in the Costa Coffee, or if I'm in Waitrose or walking around Tesco or going into a sports direct because I need a new pair of trainers, mm-hmm. the people that I see walking past me, the people that I see in the stores... These are everyday people living everyday life. And the conversation they're having mm. every day isn't covered in every second word. It's not an expletive. Every second mm. word is not a vulgarity. And I just like, well, I'm going to talk about things that happen in my life. And every, but in the sense that I'm having a conversation with you, mm. I'm having a conversation with you. We're having a conversation. How many times have we sworn in the conversation? Mm. None. Exactly. So mm. th- that's a normal conversation mm. between regular people and mm. that's what I'm I'm a regular person there's nothing special about me I don't think my my comedy is in any way cutting edge and I mean I've seen some comics in this country that are just absolutely mind-blowingly talented mm. mind-blowingly talented and I sit down I'm in awe of of the skill level of, of these guys and, and you know there's always that moment as a comic when another guy another comic gets up and he does a bit and you go I hate you <laughs> why did you think of that I hate yeah. you man that sucks <laughs> but at the end of the day if you're a comic if you get up and you do one liners if you're a comic and you do puns if you're a comic and you do music if you're a comic that tells stories if you're a comic that's vulgar if you're mm. a ventrolic whatever you want to do mm-hmm. the fact that you're prepared to get up in front of strangers mm-hmm. Take my hat off, man. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. And I am wearing hats. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's the thing. Yeah, I'll take my hat off to you. And uh, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a respect thing. So yeah. no matter who does it, if someone finds comedy later in their life, brilliant. Yeah. If a guy starts it when he's 11, 12, 13 years old, mm. brilliant. You know, the cool thing about being a clean comic is that I get to I get to perform in places that most comics probably wouldn't get to perform in. I, mm. I get invited to 
to schools. I get invited to do a lot of charity mm-hmm. events. I've been asked to do comedy. Um, they do this thing every year called Comedians and Carols, which is in, it, which is done inside churches. I've been invited to churches mm-hmm. to do comedy. Amazing. Um, so you're sitting sometime, you get up in front of 200 people. Yeah. And you're doing an hour and twenty minutes in front of people. Um, I do I do gigs on cruise ships, yes. you know. So you, you do a gig on a cruise ship, mm. for example. You do a gig for example Carnival Cruise mm. Lines. Um, you have to do you get you get told to do three thirty minute adult shows mm. and two PG shows, mm. and it has to be different material in each of those shows. Mm. So that's ninety minutes of mm. adult. So it's 18 plus are only allowed in the audience. And the PG shows is two 15 minute shows. Mm. That's another half an hour of stuff where it's kids that are sitting there. Yeah. So it's like kids with their parents and, and you, and you've got it. And you've got to be funny. Mm. I, I, even when I do the adult shows, I don't, I don't swear. I don't change mm. about, I don't suddenly start becoming vulgar and, and, mm. and doing that because I don't, I don't believe in that. I don't, mm. I don't want to do that. There's mm. not, I want to, when people go, what is adult material? I, I, I say being in debt, health issues, and mm-hmm. problems in marriage. Because mm-hmm. that's what being an adult is mm-hmm. all about. It's, it's not cool. And it's not fun yeah. being an adult. Yeah. You've got to pay rent. You've got to pay a mortgage. You've got to pay a car. You've got to pay a petrol. Mm-hmm. You've got to make sure your dogs get inoculated. Mm-hmm. They've got their deworming tub. You've got to pick up their poo. You've mm-hmm. got to you know, mow the lawn. You've got to feed your fish. You've got to clean the fish tank. You've got to... You got to clean your house. You got to scrub the the, the the skid mark in the toilet. Out. That's Everything. being an adult, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. That's and and so when you talk about that, other adults will go. That's so true. And that's that's all. That's all that I look for in comedy mm-hmm. when I do my stuff. Is people going? That's so true. Mm-hmm. It's like someone wrote uh, in a in a review about me a couple of years ago that it says it's like Mark holds a mirror up mm-hmm. to each one of us, and we go. It's true. Mm-hmm. It's so true. Mm-hmm. I think that's an amazing mm-hmm. thing as a comic is, is when you see that look of recognition and the couple go, when you're talking about something and the, and the, and the girlfriend looks to her boyfriend or the husband to the wife and they go, that's you, you do that, you do that. Yeah. And they can connect with you because yeah. at the moment you can connect with people and they find that common ground, they drop their guard because people giving up their laughter, laughter is probably the most mm. precious thing a person has. Mm. You know, to get them to give you their laughter... Yeah. They've got to drop their guard because exactly. immediately their first thought is, why must I laugh at you? Why yeah. must I laugh at you? And then you could find common ground and they just relax it to go, okay, wow, this mm. is, he's, he's talking life. He's mm. talking life. And, and that's why I, I love watching the comics that, that talk about life and mm. things that happen in life. And it doesn't matter what it is. And I just, I get great, I just get, I get great enjoy, enjoyment from, from just, talented people I'm that yeah. person that sort of that sort of tears up and gets goosebumps totally. watching mm. like someone do a phenomenal audition yeah. on America's Got Talent mm-hmm. or something like that yeah. you know I was like oh, man I just love talented yeah. people or you mm-hmm. watch what like these epic humans on, on YouTube doing these stupid things and they just pull it off it's like yeah. what yeah. how is this how do you That's even it. know that you can do that mm-hmm. how many times so this guy flips three times in the air off a building and lands perfectly on a on a bar, on a single bar, and on one leg or something like mm. that. And you think, how did you know that you can? How yeah. many times did you mm. fall and kill yourself mm. almost before mm. you knew that you could? How do you mm. know you can do that? Because yeah. me, I've got ingrained in me. I'm not jumping with anything. Yeah, I, don't, totally. I, don't, I don't do that, yeah. man. It's like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I used to rollerblade as a kid. I, I, I remember I've got photos of myself as a kid doing uh, skateboarding like on a on a on a quarter pipe uh-huh. and we built this quarter pipe with a bunch of mates and we yeah. hammered it together and we'd go up all the way to the top it's like how many wheels have I got off yeah. it's like oh man you got four you actually got air you mm-hmm. went there it's like what I yeah. look back at it now what? I stood on a skateboard the other day um, I was doing a gig and uh, there was a kid in the way the kid was like so I, was, I stood on the skateboard mm-hmm. I stood on there and in those that minute that I was on the skateboard I just stood there and I thought oh, I could kill myself. <laughs> totally. I could die right now. That's the thing. I could actually die. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. You just become so mm. like your, immort- your your mortality. Yeah. Just you become so much more aware. Yeah. It's like yeah, it oh, is it's a double edged sword, isn't it? Really, oh, it really man, is. Getting old. Yeah, to- getting old. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> you've done gigs on cruise ships, and you've done we- all over the world, right? And where is your favorite place to play? My favorite place, you know, it's. 
I love, I love gigging at Top Secret in yeah. London. I love, love, love gigging at that club. It's just, it's just phenomenal. It's mm. just, it's one of those. It's just one of my favourite places. I'm not, probably, you know, saying this now, I'm probably going to die <laughs> next time I gig there. I'm, something's going to happen. I'm just not going. I'm not going to do well. But I love playing that room. Yeah. Um, I can tell you now. I've, I've done. Um, I did a big event up in Toronto, Canada, for um, an organisation like a charity, and um, it was. Mind blowing. Mm. Um, it was in a theatre in in Dublin, Ireland. I played yeah. the Comedy Crunch in Dublin, Ireland. Mm. That was such an awesome mm. room. And then just some of the gigs, you know, playing in back in South Africa is always good fun. I've had some lovely gigs here in the UK. Absolutely lovely, yeah. lovely, lovely gigs in the UK. I've had some amazing gigs up in Scotland, in Wales. Mm. But some of the cruise gigs that I've done, that's just been absolutely phenomenal. Mm. It's just, you know, you walk off, you do 45 minutes, you do two 45-minute shows a night for seven nights in a row, yeah. and you just, you, you become sharp, and yeah. you just, you know, you can just, bam, you just, yeah. you just nail it out there, and you're in your banter with the audience, and it just becomes sharp, you, you just, it's like sh- sh- sharpening your tool the yeah. whole time. And just some of those shows have just been crazy. some dodgy, horrible ones. I mean, I've, I've done some on some cruise ships where right. um, one of the cruise liners is <laughs> it's like you get up on the stage and it's like there's people actually falling asleep in oh, the audience. No. Because good. the average age is like 70. Right. And it's like, oh man, what is mm. going on? Yeah. What is going on? And it's like a 1,500 seater theatre or 800 theater yeah. seat theatre and there's it's the, the late show mm. and they've all gone to bed mm. they've all gone to bed so there's like 60 people and they're all sitting in the back it's like it. what how do you yeah. and then you get judged on that oh well yeah. I don't think you did really well well of course I didn't do really well there mm. were 60 people in an 800 seat theatre mm-hmm. and none of them were there for comedy That's you it. know they, they came through and they were sitting miles away from you so you couldn't see any of these people yeah and those kids shows though right so you've got two 15-minute shows. What, what do you do? Do you change your act completely? I mean, it's in like... Yeah, I've, I've written stuff for, right. for kids yeah. that you can... that You can. You know, the thing is you've got 15 minutes, so you want yeah. to burn up 15 minutes. So <laughs> most, most <laughs> I of the kids... Love I love it. <laughs> so, you, so you see you've got like 30 kids all sitting in the front yeah, row. So right. what I'm going to do is yeah. I'm going to ask every one of those 30 kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. Great, I've burned six minutes. <laughs> That's great. I'll burn 15. You know? <laughs> Bit of MC work. Hey, guys, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly. from somewhere else. Yeah, Where are exactly. you from? That's great. You from South? Anyone here from South Africa? I'm here from South Africa, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly. great. All right, cool. Yeah. Having fun. That's it. You know, and then, then there's yeah. always the good old, you know, the fart joke, the poo yeah, joke. Of you, know, you got to do all of that, and yeah. then, you know, that type of thing. And but you, a lot of the times, it's, it's almost because the parents are there, and the parents love seeing their kids getting involved. Yeah. You know, they love seeing the kid getting involved. And so you talk to the kid and the kid this and this and and then the parents are taking photos of the kid. But then what you do is every now and then you drop in a bit of in a bit of comedy. So you say, oh, I'm from I'm from Africa, from mm. South Africa. Yeah. And they go, Oh yeah. I said, Do you know do you know what we have? We've got some of the deadliest creatures, deadliest predators mm. in the world living in South Africa. We've got the lion, mm. we've got the leopard, we've got the cheetah, mm. we've got the rhino, we've got Oscar Pistorius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then that's a joke, and then yeah. the parents get that and they all oh, the kids are just there, they don't have a clue, yeah. but they were all like, Oh, oh yeah, you yeah. know, that type of thing. Yeah. And it's just you know, you just you just have fun and then and, oh, my 15 minutes is up. You guys yeah. have been cool. Great. My name's Mark. See you guys later. Here's yeah. my buddy, um, Greg. He comes and then the other comic gets mm-hmm. up and he does 15 minutes. Cool. And that's big. I mean, one of the, one of the comics on the, on the cruise, <laughs> I don't know if you know Wayne Deacon. Uh, no. Yeah, he's, he's been in the UK for a while. He's just moved back to Australia. And he did this, he did this bit where he, he had the kids write a number on a piece of paper and he had about 10, 15 kids on stage. He went and sat in the chair right in front of the stage. He goes, I'm going to guess the number that you've got. And he goes, uh, this, right or wrong? Wrong. Okay, go stand there. Uh, and he did that for about <laughs> seven, eight minutes. <laughs> no, yeah, you know, that's that's all he did. He goes, well, that's yeah. how you burn 15 minutes yeah, on yeah. stage. And it's just about getting the kids involved Brilliant. and just having a good time. With yeah. Them. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what it it's is. so simple because they're like, oh, I'm all tense. You might get this next one. That's great. Yeah, that's yeah. a great little trick. That's very yeah. funny. And oh. you, it's, it's the tricks of the trade and, and you learn it from the comics that have been doing the cruises for so long and, and these things. And, you know, you, you play on some cruise lines and, and 
and you just you stay in the guest cabins and it's just absolutely yeah. lovely and then you stay on some cruise line and you stay in crew cabins yeah, and yeah. it's like this tiny little room it's mm. like real small and cramped and it's safe it's a safe room mm-hmm. because if you're, like, you're in the shower and you slip in the shower you're fine because you mm-hmm. land in your bed <laughs> so, so that's, yeah. that's cool that's you know um, yeah. but yeah it's, it's, it's been an experience man I've, I've, I've seen parts of the world I never thought I would see very mm. lucky man I'm very very lucky to yeah. I mean any comic that gets an opportunity to perform you know in their home country in their home city mm. on any stage where you have an audience that's going to laugh and have fun that's all we want at the end of the day the fact that some of us every now and then will we'll get an opportunity to, to travel somewhere exotic that's just that's yeah. just the bonus man. that's the yeah. cherry on the cake I mean you don't ever expect that and you should never expect that in this industry mm. and people that, that do expect it and think that they should I deserve yeah once you start thinking you're bigger than the industry the industry just chews you up and exactly. you out at the end of the exactly. day um, so I, I, I believe you, you know, you've got to be humble you've got to try and just um, be friends this, this job is so tough already man mm. we, we I, I, our egos are so fragile I mean we, we live Comics live with depression. You know, we haven't been booked for a gig. I mean, I've probably had the worst two months of my comedy career in the UK in June and July. The worst two months. And uh, my wife can tell you that it's been mm. some really miserable nights and yeah. you've gone through a good couple of bottles of wine and, you know, and you sit and, 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 it, and you just you want to sleep and you lose the motivation to write. Why must I write? Mm. You know, um, a lot of the cruises that we were doing, that I was doing last year, and I'm, in summertime, I think I did about 12 or 13 cruises last summer. Um, but those big ships aren't coming to the, you know, aren't coming to Europe this year. And mm. um, because of, uh, I don't know, it's because of the security thing oh, right. and everything. So they decided not okay. to come this year. Well. Uh, what I heard, apparently, I don't know what, what's financial, yeah, yeah. whatever it is. But I wouldn't have been able to travel now in any case because my passport's yeah. with the Home Office because I'm getting my permanent residence status. So can you imagine if they said, "Oh, Mark, we've got ten cruises for you," and I could, I would have to be, I can't do it. Yeah, yeah, I can't do it. I, I can't travel because I don't have a passport. So I don't have a passport at yeah. the moment. So I've, just, I've also just now landed an acting agent now, which oh, is well. So it's taken me five mm. years here in the UK. Five years. To get that agent to now start sending me, so I've done a couple yeah. of castings, a couple of auditions, yeah. but a couple of ones where I've been requested to do a casting. I said, "Oh, would you be able to travel?" So I said, "Oh, where to Kiev?" Like, oh, and it pays twenty thousand pounds should you land it. I'm like, oh, I can't go in. Yeah. I was like, so yeah. I can't go to the audition. I'm sorry. And you were requested to go do the audition. Yeah, I'm sitting here. I'm like, <laughs> totally. Why is my life? Doing? Why is this happening to me? <laughs> Look, it's me. It is me. I've got. A, I've got. A, I've got a uh, driver's license here. Yeah, take my this. driver's license. Yeah, but Please. you can't travel on that. Oh, so. Man. But, but how, how long is it going to be in... in the, um, in the it, can take, it can take up to from four to six months. So okay. it's been in there oh, since it's... sort of May, wow. end of May. Oh. So I'm hoping it's going to come back in time Can soon I... now because I've got a tour to sell up in October. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, if, if push comes to shove, um, I can pay an additional additional £1,000 oh. onto the costing to ask them to speed it up. Mm. I mean, this whole thing, just to give you an idea, when you, when you come to the UK legally, mm. <laughs> with proper visas, etc., mm. um, like I've come on an ancestral visa, which means my, grand, my grandfather was born in Chesterfield up in Derbyshire. Right. He fought in uh, World War II, he was on the HMS Norfolk, mm. and sunk the Bismarck, and you know, all that yeah. type of thing. So I've got proper British family. My mum's British, she got her because of her father. My brother's been here for like 14 years or something like that. My dad's British now, yeah, there. So mm. it's just it was my wife and myself, we're the only ones. Yeah, it's come across. It's, we only came, we're going to come for an adventure and then move back to SA, but we decided we actually, I'm just, we're just enjoying life here so much. Mm. It's an amazing country, amazing opportunities. And after five years on an ancestral visa, when our visa expires, we can actually apply for the call it definite leave to remain, which yeah. means you now can apply for permanent resident okay. status. And then a year on permanent resident status, and next year, June, we can then apply for. Um, citizenship, yeah. uh, become a naturalized citizen of mm. being here in the country for six years. That whole process, so you've got to register, we make sure we pay tax, we've got to make sure we mm. pay national insurance, we've got to do all these things. You know, we contribute, we want to contribute mm. back into society, back, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm you know, taking advantage, taking advantage of the NHS mm-hmm. and all that. I'm not taking advantage, but you know, we you make use of, of, the, of, of these facilities. So you want to contribute. You want to give back into mm. the society that's mm. helping you out. I mean, that's why I believe in paying tax and mm. paying national insurance. Mm. But to get that indefinite leave to remain, mm. we have to do 
a life in the UK test, <laughs> which means you had to study a thing about and study about Henry VIII, the oh, Magna yeah. Carta, mm. uh, the battle of this and this person was this when they erected the Stonehenge and oh, like, mm. what are you kidding? What's going on? And this whole history of England and, yeah. and the different parliaments in Scotland and in Northern Ireland mm. and in Wales and this and, and how many members in this one. You got to know all mm. that stuff. Mm. And, and and then then I have to do an English test. Mm. I have to prove that I can speak English. I'm like, mm. number one, I got a degree in law. Mm. And number two. I'm a stand comedian with me in the UK, which means I travel around. I'm not standing mm. up on stages speaking Swahili mm-hmm. or Koza. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm standing here talking English yeah. to people, and then I travel around the world. So, it literally, was one of these things where I went in with the the, the the examiner guy, and we just had a conversation. And he's basically, like, oh, I, don't, I don't even know why they make you people come mm-hmm. here. Yeah, you, you're an English speaking person, right. but you have to do it. Mm-hmm. So, paying for the life in the UK test, paying for the English test, and then paying for the indefinite leave to remain. When you're doing it the proper way, it costs over five thousand pounds for me and my wife. Wow, well, five thousand well, pounds. Yeah, man. And then you don't have any gigs. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, totally. And you can't go to, you can't leave the country can't to get your passport to earn that money. Yeah, exactly. That's ridiculous. But you're so you've got an acting agent now, right? But yeah. what, when you had some acting work in SA. What was your first gig that you did? The very first acting gig I ever did, the first acting job I did was for Vodafone for right. Europe. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Vodafone Worldwide. And all I had to do was walk up and down. So walk up these stairs looking like a stressed businessman mm-hmm. and then walk down like this little hop, skip and a jump. I was literally on set for 20 minutes. Went in, they dressed me, 20 minutes, home. And it was a massive chunk of change. Wow, massive amazing. chunk of change. <laughs> it was a worldwide ad. Yeah. And then I did a whole bunch of other local ads yeah. and a couple of things. I did some stuff for Scandinavia, yeah. the hotel group in Scandinavia. Then I got a, an acting role. I've done a couple of TV acting roles in South Africa. Acted in a, um, a, a local movie. Um, then I was in a German movie where I was the security guard. They actually cut my lines out of the movie but I had lines with the lead character and then I actually got a um, quite a cool part in um, Channel 4's Beaver Falls which they filmed in South Africa yeah. and I got to be this like American redneck guy called Chip cool. so I think like this it was redneck and I was no plaid tat, so you put on and, like this vest <laughs> and a white beard a white beard yeah right cool and um, you get into a um, like a bar fight with yeah. uh, one of the leads John Douglish he's one of he's an actor mm. in, in there and um, it, was, it was very cool, cool. so yeah, it was it was quite cool. So that was my first big exposure into the UK TV market. But it was filmed in South Africa, so it was a thing when I arrived in England. Yeah. Like, you have this attitude. It's like I arrived here to do comedy, and I was like, put my CV together, and I went, "This is what I've done." And the yeah. industry here went, "We don't care." Oh no, we don't care. Yeah. Start from the bottom, funny man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and okay, well, this that you've had some, I'm sure, some horrendous auditions in the past as well. What was the worst audition you've ever had? The best audition. Have always been. I, I got to a stage where you know I, would, I was learning some pretty cool stuff. I got oh. to a stage where I um, we get what they call it, it's a request casting, a yeah. request audition. So that means the casting director seen you, seen you, and then they request to see you. So you get a time slot, etc., mm-hmm. etc. Et the worst is open castings. Yeah. So you get there and you arrive, and they go, and then you get, you think, okay, and then something there's like two hundred people there. It's like, why are these people here? Why are all and then you just sit and 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 sit. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, this is just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I can't do this. This is yeah. stupid. So those those are always the worst. But so yeah. I never really had a bad audition. Mm-hmm. Auditions are, are just silly, really. Mm-hmm. Like the one audition that with the the job where I landed for the, the, the Scandinavian hotel group. It was one of those ones where my audition was me. St- teeing up like I was going to play golf mm. they just wanted to see me golf swing and everything and then I ended up getting the part and yeah. there wasn't even a scene of golf in it yeah. you know nothing in it yeah. it was me chasing after a teddy bear that my kid kept throwing out of a pram yeah. so he would throw it I would run and pick it up um, he would throw it into the um, the shark tank cage at, um, at the Cape Town um, Aquarium yeah. and I would dive in and then you see me get yeah. but how they formed that was I went to this big Olympic swimming pool yeah. they formed me diving and then they put a sort of superimposed me cool. into the shark tank yeah. and then basically running in this tiger cage uh-huh. um, so it was there I ran I scooped up the, the teddy bear yeah. climbed over the wall and then the tigers came up and they, like, they swiped and grabbed my leg oh. but it was like a 
Vaguely, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, the scratch mark on the pants, the trousers. That was cool. Yeah, so I've I've had some, I've had some pretty cool experiences. You know, I'm just, I'm hoping now to land a couple of commercials, which will be fun, Mm. um, be great income. Yeah, it's just a, it's a nice passive income for for something. Yeah, so you go, you sit on set, you take a book with you, Mm. you you read, you take your notebook, you do a bit of writing. and that's what you do. Yeah. That's what you do. And then you do your scene, and it's 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 never really glamorous and, and anything. I mean, I was lucky on the Beaver Force, and I had my own oh. caravan, oh. which was very cool. Yeah, yeah. I had my own caravan. Yeah, which is which is pretty cool. And and food, amazing food, yeah. right? Um, yeah, the, normally the the catering is is pretty cool. You mm. get some really cool catering, mm. and on some of the shoots, which is which is which is always fun. Yeah. It's just it's an experience, you know. Yeah. Um, to say that you know you you've done something that a select few of people have done in their mm. life you know when you see the famous actors and yeah. you actually get to act out a scene yeah. in front of a camera with a director going action cut nah, roll sound oh. mm-hmm. it's just like oh this is this is an amazing mm-hmm. experience but it's actually quite boring mm. you know it's a lot of mm. sitting around a lot of waiting yeah. but at the end of the day you do it because you need to make a living mm-hmm. and it's, it's it's fun uh, it's fun to do to see the final product mm. sometimes and, and if you're working with cool people I've been on sets where this, the people are so dull mm. and boring and it's yeah. like oh, seriously guys yeah. come on let's yeah. Yeah, come on yeah they're just like no, shut down and just yeah. waiting for their moment waiting yeah. for their moment so oh. yeah. Just relax to people. Just mm-hmm. relax, yeah. And how many shows have you done? You've done like uh, the last time I spoke to you, you said you did a uh, Billy Connolly show uh, tribute thing. Yeah, I did. It's um, called, it was called Not Quite Billy. Okay, and then you did. I did a show called Witticism. I did a show called Doing It Standing Up. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a show called Best Medicine, and I did a show called I Confused. Right. And what's your favourite show? Um, probably. Best medicine, I confused, and witticism. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those, those three, um, and then the, the, the Billy Connolly tribute shows were great. Mm. Know, I just um, they, they they went really well. It was yeah. just such so much fun. But it wasn't really me. So what I did was I would I would do a bit of Billy, but then it'd be my material yeah. but delivered as Billy. So that, that's how I did that. But then just writing the shows, witticism was the first show I wrote, like basically after in the in the process of getting married. So I had this like you know the the, the warning sign that was like of a bride, right? Yeah, like <laughs> the warning sign on the yeah. stage, um, and then the best medicine and and I confused was just just shows I, I wrote about best medicine is laughter is the best mm-hmm. medicine, and then I confused was just a ma- thing talking about modern life and how technology is. Yeah. Just affecting our lives basically mm-hmm. on a daily basis, and yeah. just doesn't really does it really improve our lives? And, mm-hmm. and why are we still so confused? Yeah. Even though we basically got the answers to everything, and I think it was, Do you use a lot of that stuff now? Still? Oh yeah. Life? I mean, some of that stuff. I mean, I've I've done nowhere near as many gigs as most comics in the UK have. I mean, I, when I moved to the UK in 2012, it took me basically up until 2014 to start getting regular work because mm-hmm. I was basically an open micer, and I had to get a, a job. Yeah. So you have to make a living. I couldn't just sit around and go oh, live the stream. So I had to get a job, and I was traveling into London five days a week. Um, it's just ridiculous. And then traveling on weekends or after work, traveling out here, then driving mm. four, five, six hours to do five, ten minutes mm. to be seen by a promoter, and then the promoter's not there. And it's like, oh, mm. come on, really? Mm. Really? Thank you. And then luckily in sort of 2014, um, I got uh, Greg from the comedy agency up in Manchester, um, you know, he, he also books Andy White and mm. Paul Carenza, and yeah. Joe Enright, mm. and, and Wes Zarek and a couple of the guys, and um, and, and he decided to take me on, yeah. and um, and then basically for 2014, then I stopped doing like work, and I just went back into full time stand up again, yeah. which was really really lucky. I did my first cruise gigs in 2015. I did only a handful of them, mm. but it was still amazing. And then 2016 was just like pow. Yeah, and then this year I've done I've done two cruises, but down South Pacific, yeah. which is quite cool. So the beginning right. of the year, so I got to see Fiji and Tahiti mm. and Bora Bora and Maui, Hawaii, yeah, and yeah. Sydney, Australia, and it was, yeah. it was really cool. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I've I've got I've probably got three and a half hours worth of material, yeah. four hours worth of material. Then and when we do a gig, we're doing what 20, 25, 30 yeah. minutes. Mm-hmm. So I can switch it up, change it up, and then always add in new stuff I'm writing mm. at the time and. Always and adding it in, and, and there's oh, this bit. This I haven't done this in a while. I'll go yeah. through my life. Oh, I haven't done this in a while, and then just change it up and make yeah. it a bit more modern because mm-hmm. I haven't done some bits in like five, six, seven mm-hmm. years. 
and I'm, I'm looking at these bits, I'm like, well, I keep doing this and this and this, mm. because it works really well, and you're getting great reactions, but I actually want to take that bit and put this bit in. That's it. And you, you were on Comedy Central in South Africa, yeah, weren't you? Yeah, I was, yeah. And, like, was, was that before that was before you came over here? Or? No, I actually, I flew, I, I filmed that in 2013, so mm. I was already in England, but I flew back, because yeah. I was booked to do that, sort of, at the end of, um, end of 2012, beginning of 2013. They said, can you come and do this? So I said, well, I will be, I'll go back to South Africa, and yeah. I'll do a small mini tour type thing and then mm. that, that great slotted in so yeah which is pretty cool that, did that open up a few more doors as well oh, it, it gives you a great showreel mm. you know it gives you a great showreel so you know you, your your 20 minute set is basically so you, you do 20 to 25 minutes and they cut that down into I think 15 yeah 15 minutes for TV so you each do about 12 to 15 minutes but they send me the, the DVD of my full right. set mm. And I use that and I cut clips and put some on YouTube and yeah. send. I've got another one for a show which I send to people who want to book me and mm. like all oh, that. Right. Yeah, and it's that's all great. clean and there's like people yeah. for corporates and that type of thing. They mm. want to book you and or we don't want anyone that swears. I mean, we all know corporates aren't the greatest. Mm. Nobody really, nobody wants to do it. We have to do it because it's that one thing that just pushes your income for that month just over the top. Exactly. You know. But nobody really goes, man, I can't wait to do a corporate. You know? <laughs> 300 people in a room that's so brightly lit with the microphone that cuts out every five seconds and they're mm. not interested in listening to me and I must do 20 minutes. Mm. Woo, yes. That's just so exciting. Mm. This is what we live for. No, yeah. it no. pays the bills. That's why we do it. Yeah. Yeah, when you have that opportunity, you don't, you don't say no to it. You do yeah. it because, you know, some of the big guys are earning such massive money. But if my agent said to me, Mark, you know, you've got to do 20 minutes to a to 40 bankers and it's all men yeah. and as dull and as boring <laughs> as everything and you, you must do 20 minutes to them yeah. and they're not going to crack a smile you go hey guys how you doing yeah. oh, and you yeah. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> they're going to pay you 2,000 pounds for example to yeah. do that are you going to say yeah. no to that yeah, right. I will yes. go and I will take the pain yeah. and I will drive home yeah. going you know what I don't care yeah. I've got to do 2,000 yeah. pounds in my That's bank it. Does it hurt me that much? It doesn't hurt me that much. It just takes away the pain. Yeah. That's why it always says, would you do this for this much money? Comics do it all yeah, the time. Exactly. We do that for that yeah. much money. Yeah. And sometimes we do some really horrible stuff for a really little bit of money. Yeah. Would you sell your soul just a little bit? Just a bit of my soul. Just a little bit of my soul. <laughs> you just chop off a bit there, yeah. pound of flesh. Oh, man, I've got a couple of pounds I can give yeah. you. That's it. Yeah. And, and so do you, do, do you write sitcoms as well, or are you in the process of writing? Well, I, 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 have, I, I write all the time. Mm. I try and write all the time. I've got a couple of scripts on my laptop, and yeah. whether they'll ever lead into anything, who mm-hmm. knows? You know? But I'm yeah. always writing, um, working on a couple of book ideas as oh. well. Nothing that I can really get into at the moment mm, because there's still works in progress. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just a couple of, yeah, yeah. The brain never stopped. Being, yeah. Yeah, do, being creative, being artistic, the brain never stopped. It doesn't shut down, you know. And, and, and especially when you're going through a tough time, yeah. just the voices in the head just mm-hmm. never stop. Yeah. Just never stop. And, and it's just it's one of those things it's like I'll, I'll lay awake and say, I'll wake up at three o'clock in the morning, I'll just be laying there, I'll be going, okay, cool. This is what I do. If I can get one more gig this month, then I can do this and I can do that. And, and you just keep yourself awake. And it's like, mm. I can't believe it. And you look in the calendar and you go, man, there's still nothing. Nobody's come mm. back to me on this. And the, mm. ah! Yeah. And then you just, you just mm. it's just horrendous, you know. But mm. you know, you, writing is an escape. And you're putting words down on paper. Sometimes they make sense. Sometimes they don't make mm. sense. But it's just about doing it. It's about discipline. You know, yeah. write is write. Whether you're a comic, whether you're a writer, where, you know, we have to put our words down somewhere, mm. our thoughts, our ideas, because yeah. you never know what it's going to become, what it's going to turn into. Mm-hmm. You could write five lines or something, and that could end up becoming the next Harry Potter, yeah. and you end up selling 100 million books worldwide, yeah. just because of a couple of lines that popped an idea into your head. Mm-hmm. So you never know. It's true. Don't doubt the line. Just don't keep, doubt don't the line. I've got a drawer upstairs with notebooks from the last 16 uh, years, man. Yeah. And I've gone through some of I think, what the hell? <laughs> how? How did I even <laughs> get paid to talk about this? Yeah. How did I do this? I can't even remember this. It's like opening the Ark of the Covenant sometimes. Oh, no, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's pretty much what it is, man. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's hurting it's my crazy. brain. It hurts my brain yeah. sometimes. I just think, I was like, oh, my goodness me. Yeah. Why did I? Was I allowed to do this? Why? I don't know. Uh, but we did it. Yeah. And it's a learning progression. I think we learn every time we get up on stage. I think every single 
opportunity. There's, I don't think there's any comic that can say, oh, I'm the perfect comic, because none of us ever are. I mean, it's taken me years and years and years, and I only think I'm starting to find yeah. my voice, as they say. That's a, that's a weird saying. But finding your voice as a comic, what are you comfortable with doing? How do you tell your stories? And I think it changes all the time. Mm. I, don't, I don't like to watch stand-up. I don't like to turn TV mm. on. And, you know, oh, it's live at the Apollo, I want to watch this, you know, or this, Mike McIntyre's Roadshow, oh, mm. I'm going to sit for the next hour and watch this. Mm. You know, I respect the guy, all the respect, I, I just don't want to sit down and watch it. I don't yeah. go onto YouTube and Google comedians to watch, oh, yeah. Mm. But when I'm digging with guys that are supremely talented, I'll mm. sit and I'll watch their stuff. And it's, in, it's yeah. inspiring, and it's like, man, mm. I'm getting schooled here. Yeah. This is this is how it's done, especially mm. when you're working with quality, quality acts, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you're seeing how they react, and you're seeing how they deal with hecklers, and you're yeah. seeing how they, they construct a gag and construct a, a story, and you're just learning all the time from these guys. So, yeah. you know, anyone, I don't think anyone is, can ever go, oh, their game is perfect, because... Yeah. The more you practice, the luckier you get, man. Mm. And there's so many other ways to do it as well, to get to the same result, really. Yeah, exactly. And, it's, and so you're always going to be learning. That's the great thing about it. You're, you're always going to be uh, you're always going to be busy, even if you're not. <laughs> hopefully, you're going to be busy working. But you know, even if you're, you're busy at home, just writing the jokes to be working in the future. You know, yeah. that's it. And there's there's hope in that. You know, there's always every line is hoping. You know, that's it. But that's why I like you, Mark. You know, you every t- when I met you the first time, I was like, oh, I said, to, I said to my wife, you know, I said, look. I met someone who's like really positive and encouraging in comedy. That was a, one of the first people I've met. No, no, that's not just blow the smoke up your ass, you know. Yeah. It's tr- honestly true. And I was like, oh, you know, he was really encouraging. I was like, oh, that's great. Every success you celebrate, celebrate those people's success and you chat, you kind of go, oh, they're doing really well. Well done, good arm. Yeah. And that's, that's how I like to feel that I am yeah. as well in comedy. Oh, there's that, just too much yeah. negativity in the Absolutely. world. Absolutely. And, and, and we can be the most negative people. We doubt ourselves all the time. We put ourselves down all the time. I'm a big person. I have massive breakdowns. I have mm. massive bouts of depression. And, you know, my wife tries her best to build me up and tries mm. to be positive and tries to help me. But I find I get great joy a lot of the times when I'm at my most down mm. by building other people up. It, it, yeah. it gives me mm. hope. Yeah. It gives me hope. It gives me yeah. an opportunity to feel better about myself. Yeah. Because if I can see, I might not be making them laugh, I might not be, but I can make them smile. I can mm. make them, you know, they, their shoulders are slumped and then suddenly now they're sitting a bit more upright and you go, okay, cool, I did that. Yeah. I did that. I'll feel good. I'll feel good as well yeah. for a moment. That little bit of endorphins that run through mm. your body just gives you that good feeling. And you know, I can say I can I can be a miserable git most of the time, man. Holy mm. crap! I've got a bad temper. I've got mm. things annoy the living life out of me, man. I get I get annoyed at plastic. I get annoyed at plastic. If mm-hmm. I can't open something, I, well, why is this plastic yeah. ruining my life? Mm-hmm. This is why is everything happened to me? Mark, it's plastic, dude. <laughs> Just yeah. But it, at the moment, it affects you. You know, yeah. I, I battle. I have battles with plastic. Yeah. You know, me and plastic, yeah. we have this, this thing. Fighting life all the time, Fighting man. I'm the same. All the time, and I'm it's like same. life's not against you Mark it's yeah. my wife and I <laughs> well sometimes it feels like it's like, why is the stone in the road that yeah. I almost tripped over why is yeah. it there stupid stone yeah. I've Just, got proof that it is against me look at this thing and that thing that's it exactly. like, I mean yeah. I'll walk through a door I'll walk yeah. through the door and then I'll crack my arm against the door frame I'm like the door frame is just yeah. right. how did I hit my arm <laughs> against the door frame did yeah. it like computer move you know yeah. type of thing sometimes you know, when things just don't go your way mm. then you tend to think everything's against you. Yeah, well, that's, that, that's a fact, you know. But I, I look at it like my wife said. Let's let's, let's try and find positives and negatives. Mm-hmm. So, so you don't have all those cruise gigs this year. But imagine if you did, mm-hmm. but you didn't have a passport. You don't have your passport mm-hmm. now to travel. So you imagine if you were turning down all those gigs yeah. and you couldn't travel mm-hmm. because you didn't have a passport. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Imagine how depressed you would be then. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, very true. So you've got to try and find the positive. Mm. I hate it when your wife's right, man. Yeah, it totally. sucks. It totally. Sucks. I know the feeling, man. I know the feeling. Yeah. It's like the, the worst is like, it's like the moment, like you're right, you're having a chat, like you, you're right, it's like yes. Yeah. And then you keep chatting. <laughs> And then you end up being wrong again. Like, I don't know how this happens. Uh, just, you talk yourself out of it, you isn't it? Go, oh no, I've said it out loud. It was fine in my head, and then I've gone, and then, then it's like oh, the words just don't make sense. Totally. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, oh, no. don't ever say to your wife, "I love you tons." It's not a good nickname for her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what's the next mission, Mark? Is just getting. I've, I've just got to keep digging. I've got to keep going. I've got to keep writing. Um, 
my wife and I we've got this we're working on this project here this yeah. book and hopefully you know it'll it'll lead to something yeah. um it's an idea we've got, and it's it's, it's mm. gaining a bit of momentum uh, at home. It's not as far as publishers and stuff, nothing yet, but we're busy working, getting the proposals together, getting the sample chapters together. That's what we're busy working on at the moment. But she's she's very busy at the moment. I, I pointed like she was actually yeah. there, but yeah. she's just busy at the moment. <laughs> Uh, she's just crazy at the moment. Mm. Um, she's also just gone on her own now, so she's consulting as well. So I'm home, she's home, no more afternoon naps. Oh, oh it's no. ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Just sit in the library and have a doze, man. Yeah. That's the best issue. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's quite... one of those old... Yeah. A li- <laughs> when a library... I, when's the last time you've been to a library? Oh, ages ago. Go to a library now. Libraries are no longer those places of silence. Oh. I... I, I'll go into the library, a little one up the road, and I'll go to the big one in Walton and Thames. It's great, it's a big library, desk, it's got free Wi Fi, it's great, you know, mm. it's, it's just awesome. I'm just a little takeaway coffee, I'm going to kind of sit in there, and, I, and then suddenly a group of people start having a chat, and then these parents coming in with kids, and the kids are all, and then they're having sit. When have libraries become these places? And then I go, shh, and then they look at me like, that was the normal standard. What this is, yeah. if you make noise, someone goes, shh, in the library, and then, oh, but then you look like it. You're the enemy. Yeah. It's like, dude, I'm not ISIS, bro. I'm, bro, I'm just, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm just telling you to shh, because it's a library. That's it. Libraries have always been places of silence. Mm. This is where you come to read, where you come to write, it's where you come to focus. Mm. But no, now it's places for sing-alongs and massive conversations by the library staff. Yeah. I remember I used to be scared of the librarian. Where'd you go for silence now? I mean, like, because we're, we're, we're like, the opposite, because the, everything's opposite now. When right? my wife goes on her meetings, I've got the house normally to myself, so yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a bit of silence. I'll, most of the time, though, I'll take my, my headphones, put them on, yeah. noise cancelling, mm-hmm. and then I'll just have some, just some soft focus music mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. in the background or, or something, or just, just put the, the noise cancelling on. And then, oh, yeah. I just... Because I like to listen mm. over here conversations. Yeah, just say it. Just no, no, that yeah. tight, tight oh, down. Some people <laughs> freaking out with some people. Yeah. I'm at the coffee shop yesterday, mm. down the road. I'm doing a bit of writing, and there were these kids, and they were making a noise in the coffee shop. And the the little old lady that was sitting there basically made this loud comment, and I I sort of looked up as she said it. But she actually had this really gruff voice, and the other the parents of the kids looked up. And they looked at me looking up, mm. and it's actually sounded, and they thought it was me. There was time making. I just looked up when the old lady said yeah. something. I was like, no, and I yeah. actually pointed to the old lady, and they just like looking like they didn't yeah. really want to believe mm-hmm. me that I'm, I'm like the old yeah. frail lady, yeah. like like old people can't be assholes. Yeah, you know, type of thing. they can. The sweetness and light. Oh, yeah. of course they are. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah, it's, great. yeah. Life is life's good. Just you just gotta keep on keeping on. I guess yeah, you know it. it is. I just I've never used the saying as much as I have since. Yeah, I traveled to a gig down in. Um, down past Devon, down that way, man. Mm. Was, I travelled there with uh, Sean Mayer. Yep. Funny guy, man. Mm. Oh, so funny. And we, we chatted in the car. It was a long drive. He, he just he, he, he kept saying this thing, you know, it is what it is. Mm. And I haven't, and I, I keep hearing it all the time now. Mm. But that's, you know, that's what it, it is, what it is. You know, what life deals you, you just mm. handle it, man. Just that's handle it, it you know. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you actually wish, wow, well, I wish sometimes life would just hand me lemons mm-hmm. because I can deal with lemons. Mm-hmm. I can do a couple of things with lemons. I can put yeah. in an alcoholic drink, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. that type of thing. But sometimes the stuff life deals you is like, you know, mm-hmm. especially being a comic, especially being in this industry, you know, people think that they, they see they see the comic on stage and he's having fun and he's laughing and he's mm-hmm. smiling. Like the moment we get off stage, it's just, wow. Mm-hmm. It's just, you've got that long drive home yep. and you're in the car and you're alone with your thoughts. Yep. Best thing, podcast ever mm. in the universe. Just listen to podcasts. Yeah, drive totally. Home. All the way. Just listen to podcasts and drive home. And, mm. um, or, or audiobooks. So that's what I do because music yeah. puts me too much in a trance. But yeah. yeah, just listen to this stuff and sometimes just it's really cool self-help stuff, positive mm. messages and, and things like that. But like, Do you meditate as well? I try. When I, when I walk the dogs, um, I walk them twice a day in the morning and the afternoons. And I get a little park down there yeah. and take a walk and yeah. let them run. And that's where I normally have a bit of quiet time then, you know, mm-hmm. just focus on things. But, yeah. you know, they, they make you smile and they, 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 bring a bit of, they bring a bit of joy. Yeah. And, to- absolutely. Yeah, I've got so, two dogs at home as well. Yeah, Same awesome. thing, man. Dogs are awesome. Dogs are cool. So, yeah. yeah. The one that they're just chilling. They, they're just happy as, yeah. 
as dogs for me, it's a dog's life, man. Mm. And they just got no stress. They just <laughs> worry about can, can they have a doze? Can they have that's a meal? It. Can they have some water? Can I go outside and have a dump? Yeah, that's, that's pretty it. much it. Eh? Easy life. Eh? Yeah. And as a and, you know, as a man, you know, normally the moment you're married, at that moment, you know, normally like the toilet is just how how. how Sacred place. <laughs> no, the, 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 why are you yeah. taking so long? Yeah, I know. Leave me. <laughs> why are you taking so long to poo? But yeah. I'm enjoying this moment. Yeah. Just let me. But it's you're it. just sitting there. So I said, so what? But yeah. it's like, yeah. Noise cancelling headphones on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bam, yeah. Courtesy flash, courtesy flash. <laughs> I can't say. That's it. But uh, yeah, the invention of the cell phone has made. I, before it used to be a book, a magazine, yeah. and like, no, everyone just takes their mobile phones yeah. to the toilet. Yeah. You know? And you, you always know when someone's having a dump because it's like perfect punctuation. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's it. Well worded. Yeah, perfect. That's it, yeah. For sure. But yeah. Um, so, Mark, where can, we, where can we find you? Um, well, tomorrow night I'm just down the road, Hersham, the Hersham yeah. Sports and Social Club, doing a gig. I'm seeing that. That's it with Nick Dixon. Nick Ellery, Hugh Davies, and Adam Bloom. And then Sunday, I'm up in Peterborough um, doing a, a, a charity solo gig up there. So yeah. an, an event up there just outside Peterborough, which will be quite cool. And then next weekend, I'm going to... Apparently, I'm supposed to be in Notting Hill doing a new comedy night there. I'm seeing that. Mm. And then Saturday, um, I'm doing a gig for Mirth Control. Mm. I've been in Stanton or something like that. Yeah. I'm opening the show there. So it's a bit of a drive, mm. but... Uh, I got the, I got the gig sort of like just one of those extra gigs mm. in the month that just right. like popped into the diary. Like, mm. Yes, mm. but then August is looking decent. Um, actually, South, in South Africa they have something which goes on sort of this time of the year. It's called the Cape Town Funny Festival, mm. and every year the promoter of that brings the Cape Town Funny Festival to London. Mm. Sort of like the last uh, couple of days of September, the last weekend of September, uh, beginning of October. And um, this year he's actually invited me, being a South African comic based in the UK, to be the only non. South African based comic to appear on the lineup, so I'm going to be doing that at the end of September this year at the Leicester Square Theatre, right. which is cool. So it's three days there. I've got a cruise booked in in the in the Pacific in October, which nice. is cool, which is great. Hopefully, my passport will take that. I've got the two to South Africa that's coming up, um, which I'll depart on the 15th of October. Mm. I'll be back sort of on the 13th, 14th of November from that. Yeah. And then just, just got to keep busy, man. Yeah. Just got to get the head down. It's going to become the end of the year. Hopefully, you know, a couple of end of the year office Christmas functions and then yeah. prize givings, award ceremonies, and hopefully get a, a corporate gig or two yeah. and yeah. afford a holiday. I mean, yeah. the big money we've paid out now for our our, our permanent residence application, it's just, uh, yeah, you know, it's like, oh, no holidays this year, darling. Yeah. No holidays <laughs> and uh, no, we're not going to go to Centre Box. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Or Buckland's. I'm not in the mood for that, no. Yeah. I'd rather stay at home and just barbecue and, yeah, and, and drink and go out yeah. to eat at the odd restaurant in London mm. or nice. the local, just go to the local Thai and yeah. sit down and have a good meal, yeah. you know? Eating well, food making people laugh I guess yeah. living life yeah well Mark thank you for coming to the show man I really enjoyed it man. thanks it's been great. It was awesome. thanks, thank man. you for having me awesome. brother I appreciate thanks it thanks man and that was episode 51 with a very funny and very talented Mr Mark Palmer go find him on Facebook go follow him on Twitter go and see him live he also runs a Hersham gig, so you can go and see him there. He's gigging all around the country, and pretty soon he's going to get his passport back. So he's been gigging all around the world on cruise ships. You're bound to bump into him at this stage. Very funny, man. You can follow this podcast on Twitter at The Comedy Defect. You can follow me at Winter Phonander, which you can keep updated about my show. Yes, that I mentioned I'm doing a show in Edinburgh called A Side Effect. It's not called Tolerance anymore. It's going to be at the Three Sisters from 2 to 3 in the Marquee for the full run of the Fringe from the 3rd until the 27th, not the 7th or 14th. So guys, if you don't want to donate, just come see me live. I've been crafting the show. I'm really proud of it. It's a storytelling show with jokes. So come see that, guys. But if you want to donate as well, you can. You can go to Patreon, type in The Comedy Defect Podcast. You can donate as little as a pound, wherever you feel this podcast is worth. And those of you that do donate, thank you, because you're paying for the people that can't. And those of you that can't donate, just share your favourite episode. Or come to my show from the 3rd into the 27th, and the Three Sisters in the Marquee 2-3, to three, guys. A side effect.
but that's it from this episode. And we are going to be releasing another episode on the last Wednesday of August. And I've already recorded it. Details will follow the week before the last Wednesday of August. But you're going to really enjoy that one. That was great. I had so much fun recording that one. And that's it from this episode. We'll see you next time. End of August for the next episode. Episode 52.